What's going on, everybody? It's the Browns, and we're here for a Monday Night Raw review for September the 12th, 2022, on the road to Extreme Rules. We still have only one match made for Extreme Rules. Nothing else has been set yet, but it looks like we have things going into Extreme Rules coming out of this show that will probably be announced in the next coming weeks. We also did get a match made for next week's Raw, which should be your main event next week, which should be a really good match. We had the return of Johnny Gargano for the first time in the middle of the ring against Chad Gable. Which, I'm going to be honest, was not the best match that you could see on for Johnny Gargano or Chad Gable. But, it's Johnny's first match in 281 days. I don't think he's wrestled on the house show loop yet. So, this could have really be his first match back. And it absolutely showed. The match started slow. It did end very well. Very good. I think if these guys run it back in a few weeks and they do another match, then I think they'll have a much better match. But just in my opinion, it wasn't a great match. It was a good match. It wasn't great. I know those two can do better. Damage Control versus Aaliyah and Raquel Rodriguez. Getting that shit, getting that mistake fixed quite quick, thankfully. Because let's face it, it was a mistake. But before we get to that, let's start this show off. So out comes Seth Rollins. You guys are making most of the fans of Monday Night Raw. Monday Night Raw is he asked the crowd if they believe in karma before saying he is skeptical about it until he had beat Matt Riddle at Clash of the Castle in front of 60,000 plus fans. He addresses Riddle request for a rematch and says he isn't interested. The crowd starts chanting, rematch, 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 rematch. He tells them to shut up because he's not. he said no to a rematch. He says he's been pondering what's the next for him over the past week. And he said it's been far too long since he's held championship gold. Riddle comes out, heads to the ring, the massive pop, he charges at Rollins, the two men go, go at it. Riddle delivers a series of kicks before tossing him out of the ring. Rollins sends Riddle's head into the announce desk before retreating. Chases him down, the two head into the crowd, Rollins manages to escape before heading to, to the back. Riddle goes to chase him, but Judgment Day's music hit, and out comes Big Bout and Damian Priest. They're not here to fight, they just want to have a talk, they want to show what's going on, they want to recruit Matt Riddle to the Judgment Day, which to me would be stupid, no. Of course, Damian Priest and Matt Riddle go back, he hears, he says that himself, and pretty much says, like, I have, I'm only focused on Seth Rollins, so the answer is no. Valor says, you're not with us, you're against us, or you're in our way. Matt Riddle fights these two off. We go to commercial break. We come back and we have ourselves a match. So, obviously, Seth Rollins versus Matt Riddle probably will be happening Extreme Rules again in an Extreme Rules match or some kind of match, stipulation match. Maybe Last Man Standing, who knows, but that's definitely where we're going. So, we got Matt Riddle versus Finn Balor. This was a really good opening match for Monday Night Raw. This was probably the best match on the entire show. Gargano and Chad Gable, of course, like I said, started very slow. Like I said, Gargano's first match back. He's got to get back in the thick of things. Run that match back in, with, in a month after Gargano's had a couple matches on the house show loop. I mean, 281 days not having any wrestling matches is a long fucking time. Do not do this. Just ask anybody who's injured when they come back six to nine months later. And they're having their first match in over that same period of time. They're going to look very rusty, but as they get through it, it gets a lot better. Anyway. Again, it's Matt Riddle. It's Finn Balor. You were going to expect a great fucking match. You got a great fucking match. Now, of course, Damien Priest is out there. Before the match, they said they got rid of Rey Mysterio. Dominic's improving. Well, it, um, is growing under the tree of the Judgment Day. Join towards... The middle of the match, it wasn't even the end of the match. Rey Mysterio attacks Damian Priest from behind and sends him over the barricade. And that did not lead to the end of the match. They kept going. And then Seth Rollins, get, he hit like... Riddle hits the DDT. The, the, the Orton wrote DDT on Finn Balor, goes for the RKO, but Matt Riddle, um, Seth Rollins shows up. He goes to DDT him. That allows... Um, that allows Finn Balor to hit Bloody Sunday, 1916, whatever you want to call it. Coup de grace, one, two, three, and he picks up the win. After the match, Seth Rollins hits a stomp onto Matt Riddle and tells him it's over. It is over. Get over it. Move on. And that was that. Good match. Like I said, if you want to check it out, it's probably the best match on the entire show, in my opinion. Sarah Shai was with damage control. Bailey says Dakota Kai and Io Shai Sky should have won the tag team title match. In the, at the finals of the tournament, before Kai says they will make up for the mistakes of the past. 
Sky says they own this women's division. Sarah Schreiber asks, tries to ask Bailey about her being the first woman to pin Bianca Belair in almost a year. And Bailey's just like, we done here. And they leave. Go to commercial break. We come back. And Dominic is in a dark room. We just see his head, his neck. He's wearing a black shirt, of course, and everything. He says he's only been known as Ray Mysterious Son, but it clashed at the castle. He became his own person, he felt, and it felt good. He says that Edge got what he deserved, and he will finish what he started. He addresses Ray and says that he knows he's disappointed, but it's too bad. He says Ray should have gotten known him and asked him what he wanted for his career. We, said, we see Ripley with, with something in his ear, which has become a massive meme online, absolutely. It will continue, and he tried living under his father's shadow. He says, for being a small man, you, you cast a huge shadow. I'm not your baby boy anymore. I'm a man now. Yes, you're a man because your master has made you her bitch. Good for him. Which, it wasn't a bad promo. Definitely see Dom's been working on his promo skills and everything. Hope to hear more from him. Definitely is going to be getting used to Dom in this role. And I said this on social to somebody, and I say it again. Dominic needs to forsake the, the Mysterio name while he's doing, in the Judgment Day. As long as he's got that Mysterio name right now. I mean, it's, I mean Cody Rhodes. When he left WWE, they did not allow him to use the, road, the name Rhodes because they trademarked it. So he, even though after he got the name, the, the Rhodes name back or the ability to use Rhodes back, he didn't want to go and be Cody Rhodes. He wanted to get the name Cody over by himself. Of course, that was foolish, and eventually he did go back to Cody Rhodes before he left AEW. However, this time I think it should be one of those things where Dom wants to get out of his dad's shadow. He forsakes the name. He's just Dominic. And no, it's not going to be a WWE, oh, Vince McMahon trade to sort in everyone's name type of thing. It's uh, It gets rid of, he's forsaking the entire lineage of his father. He doesn't want anything to do with his father right now. So he can be heel, be Dominic for now. But when, if things go, if things break down with him in the Judgment Day and the Judgment Day eventually want to kick him out, he could take the Mysterio name back and be Dominic Mysterio after that. But for now, I feel like Dominic should just be Dominic. And he only wants, it's not one of those things where it's like, oh, he lost his name. Why? Why did they take his name away? It doesn't make sense. It should be Dominic that refuses to be called Mysterio because it reminds him too much of being in his father's shadow. So, like, it'd be like, Dominic, why don't you want to be called Dominic Mysterio? Because it's, I mean, my fa- it keeps me in my father's shadow. If I want to step out, I have to be my own thing. It's think of it like Gold- Dustin Rose becoming Gold Dust. I mean, what a silly fucking name that is. Gold Dust. He stepped out of his father's shadow to make a character of his own. Dominic needs to do the same thing. Does he need to change his name to something goofy? No, just be Dominic. Just be Dominic for this heel run with the Judgment Day. Once everything goes apart and maybe he turns babyface again, you change it to you Joe back to being Dominic Mysterio. It'd be fine. But for now, he needs to be his own man and get rid of the Mysterio name. That's just my opinion. We have the video package. Johnny Gargano's return. We see bad, head backstage Austin Terry says he knows who Johnny Gargano's first opponent will be. He says that's not him because he has his hands full. His close, his close friend Chad Gable. After tonight, everyone will know Johnny Gargano as Johnny Shush. Okay. Damage, damage Control versus Raquel Rodriguez with the smiling versus Aaliyah. So, this match was real simple. This was the mistake. Triple H know he knew he made a mistake on uh, during that tag team tournament final right before Cardiff. He knew he should have put the titles on Damage Control. There was literally no reason to put them on Aaliyah and Raquel Rodriguez. They, like, Raquel Rodriguez has all the potential to be a big name player in two, three years. She's not ready for anything big. Aaliyah fucking sucks. Aaliyah should be nowhere near... Any championship gold, even if it's the worthless tag team championships. This was an utter fucking disaster the first time around. It was dumb, and it was just not necessary. However, everything is fixed. Damage control, win the championships. They actually... This is how bad Aaliyah is. Okay, um... What, um the, I don't remember what... Chi- uh, the, uh, the chiropractor is one of... of um. One of the Kurt Kai's finishers where she leaps over and puts her knees on, like legs on the back of your head and pulls you backwards. Aaliyah couldn't even take the chiropractor right. 
When Kai does the chiropractor, you're supposed to lift your legs up and go with her. Aaliyah didn't move her legs and could have ended up seriously injuring herself taking that move that way. She can't even take one of the basic fucking finishers right. It looks stupid in the end. Of course, Io Sky and Dakota Kai took out, and Bailey, of course, took out um, Mikel Rodriguez. So she got taken out. Aaliyah got hit with a very poor version of the chiropractor because Aaliyah can't fucking do shit right. And Damage Control picks up the win. People are wondering why is it Damage CTRL? It's real simple because somebody else has Damage Control trademarked. And when they want to go hashtag Damage Control, it's much more sm simpler to do Damage CTRL over the entire word of control. Just saying. We have backstage with Dominic preparing for his match. Ray walks up to him and says, and Dominic, I love the attention to like, what they're doing with Dom. Ray comes in to talk to him, and Dom is just standing there, doing like he's like doing some kind of calisthenics or something, whatever that is, just up and down with his arms and stuff, and like just getting himself loose, head head up, not like in one ear and out the other, not even paying attention to his father while his father is begging for him not to face Edge tonight because he has no idea what this type of Edge is. When Edge gets in this type of this type of zone. He's not somebody that you can, not somebody to uh, mess with. Ray says that Dominic is a man now and doesn't need his father. And that was that. Tony Gargano versus Chad Gable. This match, like I said, started off very slow. It was a very good match. It wasn't a great match. This wasn't a five star, four star banger. This is probably a three and a half, maybe a four. It was definitely slow. Of course, early on, Chad Gable started working on the knee of Gargano. That was a focus point for his entirety of the match. Gargano, again, did look very, like, slow in there, sluggish. Like I said, ring rust is a thing. They don't say ring rust as a selling point for no reason. Johnny Gargano did look like he was a little rusty in the beginning. Like I said, towards the end, it started picking up. Big move, big move, big close lines and everything. One final beat from Johnny Gargano. He picks up the win. And goddamn, Johnny Gargano looked good in the second half of this. And I can't wait to see what goes on from here. He... And Johnny Gargano has had a, like, Johnny Gargano's biggest rival is not Tommaso Ciampa or Adam Cole. Johnny Gargano's biggest rival is the stage. Because this motherfucker is walking backwards up the stage, up the ramp to the stage and gets nailed from behind by Austin Theory, who then takes a selfie to commemorate this all. My God, can Johnny Gargano ever get peace walking backwards on that fucking stage? It's every single... It's like, this dude just cannot take... Just cannot trust that fucking stage going back up from the ring. It all started, of course, at TakeOver Philadelphia when... Um, when... Chompa hit him in the back and to pretty much kick off their, heel run, their, their feud, which, my God, that... Like, it's just like the stage strikes Johnny Gargano again. He says the lower third, but it's not, it's Monday Night Raw. I wish they would have had a little lower third graphic show up just to um, continue, have the continuation of that because my goodness, that was, it's just what it is. So Austin Theory comes to the ring. We go to commercial break, we come back. I suddenly have this full promo on here because I cannot do this justice. Okay, so Kevin Owens, like, Austin Terry comes out, he says his piece, out comes Kevin Owens, I cannot do this promo justice, so you're going to sit here, you're going to listen to a man who, if you, okay, or you, if you're down and you're feeling unmotivated, get somebody who is a motivational speaker that is on the level of Kevin Owens in this fucking promo, because this man is becoming, he is carrying Monday Night Raw, he is one of the very few people carrying Monday Night Raw. We heard all of that last week. You said all of that. You tried to say all of that last week. And I had a bit of an issue with your jaw. Clearly, that's fixed. Good for you. But, uh, look, we heard all this. For a month now, you talk about how you're the future because of how young you are, how you look. And, and look, that's, that's great. That's great for you to think. But, you know, last week, I, I, I looked at you in the eyes and I told you that you, you were the hand-picked future of this company. Yeah, well, that might have been the truth, but it's no longer the case. That's not how it works anymore. Guys, guys, 
But you're not like six foot. You're not six foot seven and seven feet tall. So you, you, you might have a chiseled body and everything, but you're definitely not on the really big on the big side like a John Cena or Randy Orton. I'm just saying. Hold on. You know, Kevin, it's it's funny because I know why you guys are jealous. I do because. Well, let's just be real here for a minute. I've done more in the past five months than you two combined have done in five damn years. No. Statements like that really go to show just how big of a delusional jackass you are. this year, right? You accomplished it all because of opportunities that were handed to you. From, from winning the United States title in a match you didn't earn to, to getting that contract Back. in a ladder match you weren't supposed to be in. Back. It was all handed to you. Hey, I, don't get me wrong, I can't blame you. Because when I became Universal Champion, that title was handed to me on a silver platter. Back. All right? But... Let me tell you, that is where the similarities between you and I end. Because except for that, me and you are complete opposites, and I could not be prouder of that fact. So let me ask you this, Boston Theory. How many guys in the last two decades have come by in WWE that are just like you? Shock chiseled out of stone full of potential and how many of those guys fizzled out and went nowhere hundreds of them Facts. hundreds but let me ask you this how many people like me and Johnny Gargano have come around WWE and how many of those guys made it to the level we're at you can count those on one hand because people like you are a dime a dozen like me and Johnny Gargano are one in a million. Seth Rollins, Evan Owens, Johnny Gargano, Tommaso Ciampa, right there are four that I can name. This place, this place, these people, they need people like me and Johnny Gargano because we are the heart and soul of this business. People like you of this business completely disposable. Hey, Facts. Can you see what I'm saying to you? I'm not saying that's the case for you. Because I hope you are everything you claim to be. I hope you are the future of WWE. But I've been watching you. I've been listening to you. I can see how you carry yourself. And I'm telling you right now, I don't think you have what it takes to be the future. Facts. person who ever steps foot in a fucking professional wrestling ring needs to follow what Kevin Owens just fucking said. There are too many men and too many women who come into this fucking business and think they are the best fucking thing and this shit don't stink, they're the next big fucking thing and they just fucking fizzle out. You need to fucking follow what this guy just said because this will get you far in this fucking business.
mountain. That's how you become the face of WWP. You know, and then Kevin, like Kevin Owens slaps him, or, and then they brawl for a bit. He breaks his nose, or gets very bloody in the nose, bloody on the head, and that was it. Very, very great fucking um segment right there. Again, if you are getting in this professional wrestling business, and you somebody's talking you up and trying to make you sound like the big, big, the best in the world or the next big fucking thing, check your ego out the door and come out here and bust your ass. And you'll get to where you want to get to. That's just an any, any, and I mean any line of work. You come out there, you bust your ass, you have the passion to do it. Or I don't get, like, like, this, like this thing, I don't get paid to do this. I have not been paid to do any of the stuff, and I do it still. I might not be the best, but I'm trying to get better as we go. I'm trying to articulate better. I'm trying to be better. I don't have a graphics already. That's why you see these um, same graphics every single week. I'm going to try and work on that eventually. But you need, like, People in both companies need to listen to what Kevin Owens said in this promo and actually do it. Because there are so many people in both of these fucking promotions, AEW and WWE, that just think that they are the best fucking thing. Check your ego at the door, come out there, and give the best goddamn performance you can give when you get that chance. You get mic time for 30 seconds, you make those 30 seconds from, um... You make those 30 seconds matter. Eddie Kingston gets a fucking mic, gets a promo backstage with 45 seconds, and it was one of the best fucking promos for that fucking month in AEW. All it takes is you got to make the best out of all the time. You go out there, and they say you got 10 minutes in the ring with somebody, you got to make it your fucking best. Oh, everyone fucking loves it. It's, it's crazy. It's fucking crazy. That only a few short months ago, they had Kevin Owens wrestling Stone Cold Steve Austin in the main event of WrestleMania Night 1. And then the very next night, he started becoming a raging lunatic who was the only person in the WWE bubble for the wrestlers who saw through the Elias and Ezekiel facade. And here he is now giving us heartfelt promo after heartfelt promo. And my goodness. This dude needs to be what they need to do. There is no reason for Austin Theory to be money in the midst of money in the bank right now. Austin Theory needs to face off against Kevin Owens for the money in the bank briefcase at Extreme Rules and the briefcase is on the line and Kevin Owens beats Austin Theory. Kevin Owens can then declare that he is challenging, he can take on and like cash in the money in the bank and only want the WWE Championship, take the WWE Championship back to Monday Night Raw with a cash in, and boom, there you go. Just my thoughts on that. Good fucking promo. We need more people like this, like Drew McIntyre, like John Moxley, like Eddie Kingston, like, I hate to say it, but CM Punk has this same fucking passion when it comes to a promo. Daniel Bryan, Brian Danielson, we need more people to have promos like this. This was great. Five, ten, five out of five, ten out of ten, five out of five, whatever you want to rank it. Best fucking promo on the night, bar none. Let's go to commercial break. We come back and it's gonna be Bianca Belair making an open challenge. Why is she doing an open challenge for the Smack for the Raw Women's Championship? Simple. The Raider, the, the Raven, the, not the Ravens. I'm sorry. The Broncos and the Seahawks were at halftime. So, WWE thought, let's have the Bianca Belair Women's Champion come out and give us an open challenge to bring in a few casual audience members from ESPN. I'm telling you right now, that shit didn't fucking work. Guarantee you. Out comes Sonya Deville. Sonya Deville was in a fatal five-way elimination match on Friday. Sonya Deville was made to look like a loser to be on to Ronda Rousey. So why is she the one coming out for an open fucking challenge? Is there literally nobody else left to come out for an open challenge? You yeah. couldn't even come out all day. We've seen enough of that. Nikki Trueyash come out. No continuation on her taking her mask off and doing it at Piper Nib. And no, they were on Tuesday last week as if nothing happened. So, I don't know. The match was fine. 
But of course, Bianca Belair won. Did you really think um, Sonya Deville was going to win? Match was not. The match was meaningless. It was just trying to boost the ratings. And I'm sorry to say it, but Bianca Belair is not a draw at all, ratings wise. Period. After the match, she heads to the ring. She congratulates her Sky and Kai. Um. Uh, she congratulates Sky and Kyle on their win before saying they're going to take over the entire division. Bailey says she thinks Belair, Belair's win fed her big fat ego before saying Belair won't be able to sleep at night until she gets a match with Bailey. She goes her in and says, You will have a match when it's the right time in the right place. Bianca Belair starts like getting ready, getting hyped, and everything. Kai and Sky show up on the sides of the ring. And this was fucking stupid because where Dakota Kai was standing. Um, you have fucking Bianca Belair going back and forth, back and forth, heads going back and forth. There ain't no fucking way she didn't see the Kodakai in the side of her fucking eye. The fact that she was there for at least two minutes going back and forth, like just having her head swing back and forth, not paying attention to the woman out of her fucking peripheral finish, vision just made her look fucking stupid. At least Eo Sky was smart enough to, you know, back up a little bit so if she was going to do that, she wouldn't see the Koda, she wouldn't see Sky. So they beat up her. Here comes Alexa Bliss and Oscar. They get rid of the ba- the um, win- the um, tag champs. Bailey gets beaten down by um, gets sp- spine busted by Bianca Belair. The baby faces stand tall. Clearly, going in extreme rules, it's going to be Kai Damage Control versus Alexa Bliss and Oscar, and Bailey versus Bianca Belair. I am fine with both of those matches. Oh my! God. Oh my! is here to beat up two jobbers because we haven't seen him knocked off his feet and beat and pinned at WrestleMania. Who gives a shit? This dude has been... This guy was a loser at WrestleMania. He was a loser, I believe, a, a, a couple other times. Lost the um, arm wrestling match. Lost other matches. Who fucking cares? Did you really think him beating at Ryan Toombs and Kanash Marazi, Kanash Marazi, is going to do anything to make people care? What was funny about this match is that the fact that when Mo Moss came to the ring, the feed cut out for everybody on USA Network. Even USA Network didn't want Omos on their fucking television. That's hilarious. We see backstage Edge and Ray Mysterio. Ed Ray begs him again to give him one more chance to convince Dominic, but Edge says he needs to pay for what he did. He says he needs to pay for his actions, and the match is going to happen whether Ray likes it or not. I know what you're going through, and you know that he's a man. And sometimes people, boys just like boys just need to get their butts whipped. And since you don't, you can't. I know you're not going to want to do it. Um, I might as well do. I it. I'd be best for me to be the one to do it. Which absolutely, like, if Rey Mysterio isn't going to be the one to give Dominic his whippings, then you ask him. Like, if you if you don't have the heart to give your boy a whipping, especially if he's 21 or 22 years old, you ask your boy. You you ask your close personal friend, somebody you consider family. To do it for you. Absolutely. We had, we're back with Greg. We had backstage and Seth Rollins. He says that if you're going after the face, um, he says he's going after the face of money Night Raw, you can't miss. Bobby Lashley walks in and says that who, he who has the gold is the face of Monday Night Raw. Rollins says that wasn't the title he was talking about, but he will gladly take the U.S. Championship and challenges him to a match for next week. That's got to be the main event. It's the title championship that everyone's going to have to chase after because they're dedicated to keeping the titles on Roman Reigns for Rock, which is bullshit. He needs to tell, Vince, tell Triple H or Vince Jr. at this point that Rock versus Roman does not the WWE or Undisputed Championships. Get them off the road. AF. There is nothing more he can do to the championships. He's just diminishing them. He's diminishing their value now. That's all he's doing. Him, every time he wins with the help of the bloodline, it hurts the value of those championships. I don't want to hear it from anyone else. He is a paper champion until the day he loses that title clean. He is a paper fucking champion. And will always be a paper fucking champion. He has the title for 700 plus days, and all of them are fucking meaningless. Period. We get an interview with Miz at home, and I need to take a piss break. Maurice walks in and asks if he's ready for a premiere. Miz asks if she really wants to go before Maurice convinces him that Dexter Loomis can't get into this place. Miz says that he had to have the police escort last week, but he will still be able to get in. He says he didn't walk to, walk to talk about it before kicking everyone out of his home. He, we then see Dexter Loomis in his home with a character of Miz, Maurice, 
and their kids. So everything's going crazy at the Miz's house. I didn't give a shit. Back for break, Edge. Oh, shoot. Mysterio is your main event. This is basically a tale of what happened is Edge beats the shadow of Dominic Mysterio. Dominic gets no offense in, in the beginning until the referee's back is turned. Um, Ray Rip quick, like, attacks Edge from the bottom and take, knocking him down. That allows Dominic to throw Edge into the um, stairs, allowing his knee to be injured. Dominic beats up the knee for a while. Edge gets back up to- back on top. Ties Dominic on the ring ropes, in the ring ropes. And it's like, you asked for this. You you had this coming. You asked for this. And starts just pounding on this guy, giving him his pound of flesh, something that Dominic has needed since the day he came into this company. Just giving him his pound of flesh, the referee backing him up every so often. Eventually, Rey Mysterio runs down and tries to stop Edge, and Edge pushes him back. First off, referee should have called a disqualification right then and there because Edge, um, Rey Mysterio touched Edge. That's a disqualification. He continues to push him back as, Edge, as Rey keeps trying. Eventually, Damian Priest grabs Rey Mysterio from outside the ring, brings him out, and throws him into the, anna- the commentary's desk. Then Balor comes in, chop blocks the hell out of um, Edge's knee. They beat up on Edge some more. Mysterio, Rey, Dominic gets the chair and hits him a couple times on the knee. And then they set the chair up, put, Finn, put Edge's leg on the chair. You have a coup de grace onto the leg that fall, just slides right off the chair. Didn't really look like it hurt that much. And they end the mat. They end the show. With the with the Judgment Day standing tall over Edge again, really good um, ending of the show. Um, there's still some stuff in here. There was no reason to have Omos on the show. He's a waste of fucking space. Fire it, Triple H, fire his ass. Omos brings nothing. And how many times are we gonna sit there and have Omos just sit there and go? Rah! There's no reason that Braun Strowman is on SmackDown and not Monday Night Raw because Omos is there. Who cares? The Judgment Day stuff's really good. Uh, can't wait to see Bailey take that title off of Bianca Belair because Bianca Belair is absolutely just fucking cringe. I miss Bianca Belair from NXT, who was a heel, who actually the EST gimmick made sense with because EST is not a babyface gimmick whatsoever. That is a heel gimmick. It was tailor made for her heel run, and then of course they had to turn her babyface because she was going up against Shayna Baszler for the NXT Women's Championship, and you're not out healing Shayna Baszler in NXT. So, yeah, Matt Riddle versus um, Seth Rollins is going to happen Extreme Rules one final time, more than likely, unless they have Matt Riddle win. Then I don't know what they're going to do after that. Obviously, next week, the, the United States Championship, uh, Seth Rollins versus Bobby Lashley. Obviously, Matt Riddle is going to screw Seth Rollins out of that match, and that's going to lead to the match at the pay-per-view. So much things to look forward to. We got some things set up to the future, which is definitely no- not normal for WWE. They don't ever really have anything set up to the future. So that's definitely a good change. We'll see what happens. I know people are still expecting Sasha Banks and Naomi, but they're rocking the runway on these um, supermodel shows and like being runway models and doing a bunch of other things. They don't have time for WWE right now. And I'll say it once, I'll say it again. I don't want to see Mercedes back or Trinity back. They've done everything they literally can do in WWE. If they want to go be supermodels, they want to go do fashion stuff, they can. They want to take the rest of 2022 off and go and make the returns in the Royal Rumble next year. By all means, go ahead. They don't have to be back. Go do what you're doing. Mandalorian two, three, Season 3 is coming out. Maybe Sasha Banks will be in that. Who knows? Just go do what you're going to do. Do yourself. You don't have to wrestle if you don't want to. You can go to AEW. You can go to WWE. Don't know. Don't care. But, yeah. Better show last week. Absolutely. No Strowman bullshit. But, like, again, Omos is worse. Hit that subscribe button, comment down below, like or dislike this video, find me on Minds of the Crowns Club, find me on twitch.tv slash the Club, and find me on Instagram at the Crowns Club. And I want to thank everybody who hit up, hit the videos link on this one for last week's episode, 468 views on YouTube as an anomaly on my channel. I'd like to thank everyone who clicked it, even if you didn't mean to. But until then, thanks for and I'll see you guys later.